Do you believe that behind every bottle of sweet honey lies a miraculous journey from the tireless flights of bees to the skillful hands of beekeepers? And do you know how royal jelly, a priceless gift from nature, is created? Especially in China, the world's leading honey producer, where tradition and technology blend to create exquisite products. Join us as we unveil the mysteries of the honey and royal jelly harvesting and processing procedures here to better understand the value of these precious sweet drops. Beekeeping in China is mainly concentrated in regions with favorable natural conditions such as Yunnan, Guangxi, and Sichuan provinces. These areas have rich vegetation, especially flowers, providing abundant nectar sources for bees. To obtain high-quality honey and royal jelly, the journey begins in boundless flower fields. In China, beekeepers are not just workers, but also artists, companions of the bees, paying particular attention to creating an ideal living paradise for these tiny creatures. They do not simply choose a location, but seek out homes with abundant floral resources and a pristine environment, often in peaceful rural areas or majestic mountains. In particular, did you know that beekeepers in China have a unique secret? It's nomadic beekeeping, moving with the flower seasons to maximize nectar sources from different flower species, creating unique honey flavors, like a symphony of nature. But the life of bees is not always sweet. In seasons when flowers are scarce, beekeepers become dedicated nannies, supplementing food for the bees usually sweet drops of sugar or nutritious pollen grains, and ensuring that the bees always have a source of clean water to quench their thirst. They are also meticulous doctors, regularly checking the bees to detect early signs of disease and applying natural prevention methods, minimizing the use of chemicals to protect the health of their little friends. And finally, they are talented architects, regularly inspecting, cleaning, and replacing honeycomb frames, creating a clean and comfortable living space for the bees. Because they understand that only when bees live in the best possible environment can they create the most exquisite honey and royal jelly, priceless gifts bestowed by nature. Did you know that a bee must fly about 90,000 kilometers, equivalent to twice around the earth, to create one kilogram of honey? This shows the value of every drop of honey we use every day but have you ever wondered why bees choose to fly so far? The answer lies in the diversity of flowers. In China, with its vast area and diverse climate, bees can find abundant nectar sources from flowers such as canola, acacia, lychee, and longan blossoms. The honey harvesting season lasts from March to October, when flowers bloom profusely, providing abundant nectar for the bees. Each hive typically houses 40,000 to 60,000 bees, with worker bees responsible for collecting nectar. When the hive has accumulated enough honey and the honeycomb frames are sealed with beeswax, beekeepers check the honey's ripeness by observing the extent of the honeycomb cells being capped with beeswax. When about 80 to 90% of the cells are capped, it is the ideal time to harvest. To ensure honey meets standards before harvesting, Many farms in China employ technology to measure honey moisture content using spectrophotometers. Are you curious about how traditional and modern honey harvesting processes differ? Beekeepers use protective clothing, gloves, and veils to avoid bee stings. They use gentle smoke or steam to safely drive the bees away from the honeycomb frames without agitating the colony. Beekeepers gently remove the honeycomb frames from the hives, ensuring not to break the honeycombs. Then, they use specialized knives or uncapping machines to open the honey cells. The honey frames are placed in a centrifugal extractor to separate the honey from the beeswax without damaging the structure of the honeycomb frames. Raw honey after harvesting contains many impurities such as beeswax, pollen, and debris. To ensure purity, honey undergoes multiple filtration steps. Pasteurization helps to kill bacteria and yeasts that can spoil honey. Typically, honey is heated to about 60 to 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to maintain its nutritional quality. However, there is some controversy regarding honey pasteurization. 
Some experts argue that high temperatures can destroy important enzymes and nutrients. What do you think? Do you prefer to use raw honey or processed honey? Raw honey retains its natural flavor and nutrients, but may contain some impurities. Processed honey ensures hygiene and safety, but may lose some of its nutrients. While European countries tend to prefer raw, minimally processed honey, China employs many modern processing technologies to ensure honey quality and shelf life. A better method is to filter honey using cold membrane filtration technology, which helps remove impurities without destroying enzymes, but it is expensive and not every beekeeping farm adopts it. One of the important steps in honey processing is concentration to reduce the moisture content to below 18%, which helps extend shelf life. This process is usually carried out using vacuum evaporators to remove water without affecting product quality. Why is moisture content important? If honey contains too much water, above 20%, it can ferment and spoil quickly. Did you know that honey can be preserved for a very long time, even thousands of years, if stored properly? After undergoing filtration, pasteurization, and concentration steps, Honey is packaged in glass jars or plastic containers for preservation. Some manufacturers also use a septic packaging technology to ensure the highest quality. Did you know that royal jelly is considered queen food? It helps queen bees live longer and reproduce better than worker bees. Unlike honey, royal jelly requires more human intervention in the production process. Royal jelly harvesting is technically more complex Royal jelly is only produced to feed queen bees, so for efficient harvesting, beekeepers must stimulate bee colonies to produce more queen bee larvae than normal. Compared to New Zealand, famous for its high-value manuka honey and strict harvesting processes, China leads in royal jelly production, but the quality is inconsistent. The reason is that to increase production, some bee farms in China stimulate bee colonies with hormones causing royal jelly to lose its purity. In addition, some places also mix royal jelly with other substances to increase profits. So, how do humans trick bee colonies into producing royal jelly in mass quantities? Initially, bee larvae are placed in artificial queen cups to stimulate worker bees to produce royal jelly in large quantities. Healthy bee colonies will produce higher quality royal jelly. When worker bees detect these larvae, they mistakenly believe they are future queen bees and begin to secrete royal jelly continuously to nurture them. Thanks to this technique, beekeepers can harvest royal jelly in large quantities without waiting for the bees to naturally create new queen bees. A concern that many people might have is whether forcing worker bees to continuously produce royal jelly affects their health? The answer is yes. To prevent negative impacts, Professional beekeeping operations always prioritize implementing special care measures during honey extraction. This is because neglecting to provide essential nutrition and maintain an optimal living environment can quickly weaken the bee colony, leading to serious consequences. A significant decrease in honey production and a threat to the lifespan of the bee colony. After three days, when the queen cells contain enough royal jelly, Bee farms use vacuum suction devices to harvest the royal jelly, helping to reduce contamination. Royal jelly after harvesting is stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius to preserve its nutrients. Did you know that a healthy bee colony can only produce about 500 grams to 1 kilogram of royal jelly per month? This is why royal jelly is considered a rare product. Honey and royal jelly are high-value products in the food and pharmaceutical industries. From beekeeping and harvesting to modern processing, China has created many high-quality products for both domestic and international markets. However, the use of technology and processing is still causing much debate between preserving nutrients and increasing shelf life. In addition, the United States and Europe have previously detected antibiotic residues in Chinese royal jelly, leading to import bans or stricter inspection requirements. This has forced China's royal jelly industry to adjust its production processes to meet international standards. However, with continuous efforts, they are also opening up new opportunities, moving towards sustainable and high-quality agriculture. What do you think about the future of this industry? 
And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to join us in discovering more fascinating things about the world of agriculture.